My horrible neighbor keeps escalating revenge tactics, and now it's gone too far. A little background info, my wife and I purchased our house a few years ago, and the day we moved in, our neighbor, Roger, called the cops on us for moving in too loudly. We weren't playing music or even talking amongst ourselves, it was just my wife and I moving our belongings into our new house. The cops came, I explained that I was just moving, and they apologized for bothering us. Roger, in all of his retired proud boy glory, came out of his house immediately after they left to let us know that he was the one who called the cops, and in more words says he's setting the tone for our new life. Even still, we were super cordial with this guy because we wanted to make a good impression in our new neighborhood. It was our first home after all, and it was important for us to make it homey. About a year or so later, our first son was born. We let our property fall to the back burner while we adjusted to parenthood, and a few newspapers piled up in the driveway and in the rain, sort of melting onto our drive. All on our property. Roger comes knocking on our door to complain. I tell him that I'm sorry and that we let it get away from us. I explain that we have a newborn son and I'd get to it ASAP. He digs in and starts telling me how when he was a new father, he didn't let anything affect his property, and he tells me I'm being lazy. I said, then why don't you pick it up if you're so worried about it? To which he says, no, I want you to pick up the frickin' mess. I was trying to be semi-cordial still because I'm not interested in unnecessary conflict with my neighbor, so I told him fine, I'll get to it, and he left. Later that year, Roger comes over one day to ask if he can trim the tree that hangs over from my fence onto his side of the fence, and I'm fine with that, so I say no problem. And he casually mentions how one time, when a 17-year-old kid, friends with his delinquent, substance-addicted son at the time, broke into his garage, he hit him in the head with a baseball bat until he was, quote, retarded. And the police came and he was cleared of all responsibility because it was a break-in. He was smiling and laughing while telling me this. Noted, I'm thinking to myself. This guy is a freaking piece of crap psychopath. Well, it's a couple of years later now with a few more minor run-ins, but nothing too significant. And my wife and I just had our second son one month ago. About 10 days ago, my son wasn't even three weeks old at that time, I got a notice on my door saying my lawn was in violation of city code. I'd mowed it two days before my son was born, so it's been about three weeks since I mowed. And it's been raining since. I have 48 hours to comply. I call the number on the card and have no answer, so I call the non-emergency line to verify what my responsibility is because of the vague wording on the door hanger. It's because one of the types of grass in my lawn, growing very sparsely, like one blade per square inch, is over 12 inches tall. The majority of the grass was like 2 to 3 inches long, but there was another type there as well that grew faster. I told them that I'm a new father and I asked for an extension to deal with it later. They said, don't even worry about the lawn, just take care of the baby. So now, with some newfound confidence, I mow my lawn in a spiral shape, leaving a lot of grass remaining as a middle finger to whoever called the cops about my lawn. And let's face it, we know exactly who it was at this point in the story, right? A couple of days later, Roger talks to me over our shared backyard fence and asks about my lawnmower and if it's busted or something. I told him, no, I just have more important priorities than mowing my lawn. And I tell him about my new son, and then I ask if he was the one that called the cops on me about it. He says he called code enforcement, but not on me. He called on my new neighbors on my other side, a really nice Mexican family who's always diligent about their lawn and always working outside on their property. He says code enforcement must have happened to notice my lawn when they went to follow up on his call next door. At this point, I say something along the lines of, Look, I'm a pretty freaking cool guy. If you have a concern about my property, then you can just speak with me directly. He swears up and down that he didn't call on me and that it was just a coincidence. Whatever. About a week after that, yesterday, he knocks on my door and I already know what's coming. I answer the door kind of chuckling and greet him. He's kind of chuckling too at this point because it's freaking ridiculous. He says, Hey, yeah, so you said I could talk to you if I had an issue about your property. And I tell him, yeah, by all means. He gestures to my lawn and asks what it's about. I say, it's kind of like a middle finger to whoever called code enforcement on me. And he becomes irate. He says it's a middle finger to him. I stop him and remind him that he told me he didn't call them on me, so he shouldn't feel targeted. 
He ignores me and restarts his sentence the same way, so I cut him off again and say, I'm specifically telling you it's not a middle finger to you, Roger. And he says, If it's a middle finger to me, then this means war. Over what? I ask him, laughing. He's getting bigger and huffier by the second and tells me I'm a lazy piece of crap and my property is in shambles. <laughs> and that all the other neighbors mow their lawn. I remind him that I have a newborn son and that my lawn can suck an eggplant for now. He puffs up as big as he can and says, I never had this issue when I was a new father. I told him I don't give a crap about what he did as a dad. Ironically enough, his addict son lives in the house on the other side of him and causes trouble in the neighborhood all the time. Cars peeling out, people screaming at each other, addicts always waiting outside, among many other things. Now he tells me that he's going to call code enforcement on me every day and I tell him to get the frick off my property. He says, move me. So I tell him I'm calling the cops and he says, do it. So I grab my phone and start dialing. He walks to the sidewalk and keeps yelling at me about how I'm lazy and not fit to own my own property. The cops come and speak with us. It's all very anticlimactic. They make sure to let him know that he needs to get off my property when I say so and that's all I wanted from them. Tomorrow, I'm going to take my hedge trimmers and mow my maze down to 11 inches. Frick you, Roger. In short, my butthole neighbor called code enforcement on me about my three weeks worth of unmowed lawn. There's a code stating that the lawn must be less than 12 inches, so tomorrow I'm bringing my hedge trimmers out and trimming a couple of inches off the top to bring it down to 11 inches. Am I the jerk? Nope, Roger can F right the frick off. Although it does sound like you've gone a few years without being worried for your lives, people like this would make me pretty anxious all the time. You do hear stories about people like him having enough, and then just bringing out the shotty for a massacre. It seems like he must have been a bit of a pariah on the street, especially given that his son's place across the road causes all sorts of problems. Surely there had to have been a point where the police just started taking all calls from his residence with a massive grain of salt, because if he was doing it to you, he was probably doing it to other people as well about all sorts of things. Also, why do we get so many stories from the States about lawns? Who cares that badly about a strip of grass? I thought you were all about private property and stuff rather than communal appearances. If someone wants to have a crazy grassland on their lawn, let them. Maybe ask them about it when you want to sell your place, if it's such a big deal. Even that's kind of annoying, but people will probably understand that at least. It kind of sounds like Roger wants to be a one-man HOA, and we all know how much everyone loves HOAs. The fact that he called the cops on you just for the noise of moving in was an early warning sign that this man was going to be a major pain in the butt going forward. Roger is the jerk. Am I the jerk for proving that I'm the owner of my home? I, a 20-year-old female, was fortunate enough to buy a house. For only being 15,000, I have to say it's quite nice. It didn't really need much work besides a new roof and the cabinets needed to be replaced, but my dad is a carpenter so that didn't really matter all that much. The previous owner was an older man who unfortunately passed away after living in the house since before I was even thought of. I finally got to move in two months ago. It's been fun making it my own, but it's taken some time to get used to living alone. Three weeks after moving in, I was outside starting some work, clearing out a few places to plant a garden and flowers in the spring. I live in the Midwest, so I wanted to get this done before the ground freezes. My next-door neighbor, I'll call her Jane, who's in her 50s, came out and introduced herself. I explained that I just moved in and was preparing my yard for spring. She said it was nice that someone was doing some work for the old man and gave me a spiel about how it's a quiet neighborhood and I shouldn't have parties. I told her I don't throw parties but was planning on hosting a housewarming and Thanksgiving soon. She said it was weird to throw a housewarming when I was renting and I told her I own the house. She didn't believe me but went home. Last week I was out painting my front door and she stormed over yelling that I'd better have got permission to paint someone else's house. I again told her that I own the home. She started yelling that I was too young to buy a house and she was contacting my landlord. I told her to stop being a busybody and to leave me alone. She started demanding proof. I told her it was none of her business and to get off my property. She walked to the edge of her yard and called the police, saying I was a squatter. 
When they showed up, I showed them my paperwork and asked to trespass her from my home. Jane is still angry. I was talking to my dad the next day asking what I should do. He said I was a butthead for making enemies and my neighbors and said I should have just showed her to put her mind to rest. I don't feel like I was in the wrong, but my dad thinks I was. Am I the jerk? You weren't the jerk. It feels like having this woman be your friend would be more of a hindrance than having her as an enemy, to be honest, so you aren't really missing out. A busybody like this is going to come out and ask you what you're doing whenever she sees you around and chew your ear off about all the gossip in the neighborhood and whatever her kids are doing to raise her grandkids wrong, among other things. Some people might not hate that as much as I do, but personally I think a quick wave is about as much as I generally want to have to do with my neighbors. Having them hate you just means they ignore you. But my preferences aside, she was prejudiced as all heck to just assume that a younger-looking woman couldn't possibly own property. She might not have even apologized or believed you if you'd shown her the certificate. And since I've already drawn enough assumptions about Jane, I'll just say that people like her, as often as not, just kind of resent having young neighbors with visible social lives anyway, as it just sort of reminds them about anything in their lives they aren't satisfied with. So now that I've drawn a million generalizations about your jerk neighbor, on to the next story. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, linked below. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Revenge is a dish best served very, 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 very cold. In my young 20s, I moved to a new city to try and start my career and life. Money was very tight, but I was confident that I would get things up and running. In my job search, I came across a promising opportunity at a small firm. We'll just call it The Firm. Instead of offering me the job, the owner said he'd like me to come in for two days and work. If it was a fit, they'd hire me, and if not, they'd pay me for the two days. Money was so tight at the time that I figured taking the bus to and from the job was a luxury I couldn't afford, and I walked an hour each way to get there. Money was very tight. I did good work both the days and worked very hard, but it wasn't a fit. The owner then tells me, I know we said we'd pay you, but it's just too complicated to set you up for just two days, so you'll just have to be happy you got the experience with us. The way he acted really rubbed me up the wrong way. I was mad, as I really needed the money. But as I was trying to find a job, I figured it wasn't in my best interest to make waves, as word may get around that I was difficult. I did, however, decide that someday... Some way, I would get my revenge on the owner. I did find a good job that led to a great career, but I always kept tabs on the owner, looking for the time and place to get some revenge, and even a few times considered some more juvenile methods. Just short of 20 years passed. By this time, I was now very senior in my chosen profession. But instead of working for a small firm, I was a leader in a very large national company that hired firms. As it turns out, we had a large contract come up that I was the lead executive on the procurement team in the area the firm operated in. Things have changed a bit over the years, but bidding on these contracts was at the firm's expense at the time back in the early 2000s. However, to safeguard them from wasting too much money, the bidding would be in stages. Well, sure enough, the owner and his firm put in an exploratory bid. They weren't perfect for the job, but they could actually do it, so I assisted in moving them to the next stage, and the next stage, and then the final stage. The easiest thing I could have done was shut them down right away and got a bit of revenge, but they were qualified, so I didn't do that. There was some risk to letting them go through to the end, though. Though I was the lead, it was a team decision, and to be honest, if they had the best proposal, despite my thirst for revenge, I would vote for them. The proposals and presentation came in, and luckily the other firm was a bit better and we went with them. Normally the executive lead didn't deliver the bad news in the bid process, but I volunteered to take the call and that was my little dose of revenge. It was fun to call the owner, who had no idea we'd met 20 years ago, and tell him, we were impressed with your proposal, but it's just not the right fit. I know you must be disappointed to not get the contract, but at least you got great exposure to our process. I know I should have used his own words from 20 years ago, but I couldn't bring myself to do that. The firm must have done about 200 hours of work on their proposal, so I figured that was paycheck for my 16 hours with 20 years of interest. Too far? Am I the jerk? Yeah, that owner at least had that coming. 
As far as I can guess, he'd almost certainly still had to pay his employees for the time, so it was probably a massive net loss for him personally, and we'll call that a win. 200 hours of multiple staff members' salaries, all for nothing, is a pretty big knock. And even if he didn't realize who you were, let's be honest, if he pulled that crap on you all those years ago, he almost certainly pulled it on other people as well. Hopefully, your word include him into the fact that it was one of the many people he had screwed over who'd come back to haunt him. Also, 20 years is quite the time to remember and let this stew. It's undeniably petty, but honestly, as far as I'm concerned, that boss deserved every stumbling block that life threw at him for cheesing earnest young hopefuls out of their well-deserved money. I hope that he didn't get to do too many more before the Department of Labor was called on him to set him straight. Moral of the story here, the many people you wrong in life don't just go away. And the more you do it, the bigger the chances of you running into one of them who'll come over and wrong you right on back later in life. Am I the jerk for quitting a job on the spot when they gave me a bad evaluation after only working 15 hours? I was talking about this with my sister the other day, and she thinks it was a bit of a jerk drama move on my part. When I was 23, I started working at a clothing store in the mall for some extra money. I was there for about a week, though I only worked some short training shifts. I worked a total of 15 hours. The managers pulled me aside and said they gave me an evaluation. That would have been fine, I'm open to criticism and improving. However, they gave me a really low score, like 5 out of 45, saying I was not living up to expectations and it was going to go in my file. They promised it would be amended when I improved. I pointed out that this was unfair, as I hadn't been trained on three quarters of the things on that list. So why was I getting a low permanent score before my training period was up? I asked for the paper and they said I couldn't have it, but they'd give me a copy. I told them, never mind, this wasn't a job I saw myself thriving in and they should find someone else to finish my shift. It was my first long shift. I was supposed to work 7am to 5pm, but I said I didn't care if they had to stay late and I left. They tried to get me not to leave by saying they'd give me a copy of the sheet of paper, but I said I wasn't going to work there any longer and I went home. I found a new job babysitting until I finished my degree. I've never been into that store again. So, am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk. The narrator knew what was up halfway through the story, and what was up was that these people were trying to give you a low starting score so they could negotiate your pay down to the absolute minimum. Also, if your starting score was that low, they could have every excuse to not update it and keep you at a low wage in future negotiations. This is a method used by a lot of employers to extract leverage, keep spirits low, and wages down. You were 100% in the right to walk out of there and let them find some other poor sap to exploit the same way. The narrator as a younger man would absolutely have fallen for this in his first few jobs, and I'm glad to see that not everyone was so malleable by bad faith employers. Well handled. Screw these jerks. My mum used to lock me out of my room because of the bad grades that she caused. I really want to get this off my chest. We lived in the Santa Cruz Mountains at the time, so there really wasn't anywhere for me to go. You might be thinking the lock was some cheap lock that you could bypass somehow, but this was a heavy-duty fingerprint scanner that you would find in a bank. I'd have to freaking ask if I wanted to sleep. This happened from when I was 14 to 16, and was one of the last straws to me living in the same household. The reason why is even worse. My brothers and I got Chromebooks from the school, you know, for homework, and my crazy mother decided that she needed to take them away and lock us out of the internet. Since we couldn't do homework at all, our grades tanked. The school and most of our teachers mentioned it constantly, and she thought she knew better than an entire freaking school. Go figure she's an anti-vaxxer to boot. Did I mention that she did this with the house too? I'd get home at 4 to 5 p.m. and be stuck outside waiting for her to get back for more than three hours. This was a regular thing. This treatment has me with boundary issues to this day, and it's been five years since then. My god, no wonder you'd have issues after being raised by that monster. Being locked out of the house in a number of the different weathers you'd have up in the mountains is downright neglectful, and it's a damning indictment of your neighbors, if you had them, that nobody ever called CPS on her. All kids deserve parents, but not all parents deserve kids, and this lady certainly didn't deserve them, in our limited picture of her. She was setting them up to fail and then punishing them when they did. What a crappy parent. I hope you went no contact after this. 
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to check out some great music, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.